good morning good afternoon and i believe good evening depending on what time of day that you happen to be viewing this welcome to the very first video here on this youtube channel that is simply called perspective with mwape and obviously i'm mwape in this particular case i cannot thank you enough for everybody who's taking time to just stream this video watch and even comment i know that some of you have already done so i really really thank you so much so let's really get into this thing so why 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 is this channel called perspective with morphe i guess one of the first things that came to mind when i initially had the idea to start a youtube channel was you know what i really would like a platform where people who are really trying to better themselves better the people around themselves and better the communities, I guess could sort of have a voice and could sort of create a space within which we could share ideas and also the information that we have. And this is not in any way me being the expert in this case, I just happen to be sort of the curator of what I believe is an endless source of information and wisdom that I've learned over time and also other people constantly share with me and also what you as well bring into this a particular conversation. So this is why this is called perspective with Mop and not Mop is perspective. There's a big difference. So let's get into the title. So today's title is simply, what do you see? I am not an optometrist. Let's just get that up out of the way. I am not even op an optician. So that means that I'm not talking about what you see with your natural eyes. I'm more interested in what you see with your mind's eye. Because I believe more than anything that what we see up here is a huge determinant of how we are going to outwardly carry and conduct ourselves. Now, in order to sort of really bring this home, I really like to tell stories. And so allow me, well, I guess in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and share a story of a man by the name of Roger Bannister. Some of you might be familiar with the name. For those of you who are new to this name, Roger Bannister made history in 1954 by becoming the first man to run a whole mile in under four minutes. In Africa, because we well, not all of Africa, but in Zambia, we don't use miles, we use kilometers. So that means 1.6 kilometers in approximately three minutes and 59 seconds. Why was this so significant at the time and why did Roger Bannister make so many headlines across the globe? It was believed and even people had been trying from as early as 1866 to run a whole mile in under just four minutes. And it was impossible. Science, scientists had given what would be the best weather conditions, what would be the best temperature. They had advised athletes to get huge crowds to come to the uh, arenas where they would be running in order to boost them and give them confidence. Roger Bannister, however, did the impossible. He ran in possibly the wettest conditions in London. The weather was not so good, good at if it ever is in London. And at the same time, there's only a small crowd and some officials who are there to make sure that this race was timed. And in, at exactly three minutes, 59 seconds, Roger Banks crossed that finish line, mocking history for the entire world. What is interesting is that right after Roger Bannister did this, many other athletes went to run this particular mile in only, uh, rather in less than four minutes. It's like Roger Bannister's breakthrough automatically broke breakthrough for other people. So why am I talking about Roger Bannister? You, maybe you might not even be able to relate, but Roger Bannister faced some of the most, I guess, challenging odds. It was in the press, scientists said it was physically impossible for a human being to run that fast, to cross a mile in under four minutes, but Roger did it. And it is documented and actually written, you could Google it whenever you have the, an, an opportunity to do so, is that he constantly visualized himself running across that finish line. He constantly visualized and talked about how he was going to do it. He had been trying for a number of months, but he felt that he was ready when he called the press and everybody to come and actually witness this happen. And when he did it, to him it was not a surprise nor a shock in any instance because he had been visualizing it, he had been seeing it in his mind and he had preparing himself for this moment that his mind automatically created a response in which his body was able to do what his mind had already conceived. So the question falls back now, what do you see? You might not be in Roger Bannister's position, but you might be facing some insurmountable odds. 
it could even be just as small as your education well not necessarily small but i guess in comparison to donald trump's problems it could be your education it could be your family's uh family could be finances whatever the case it may be i don't profess this to be a solution that is ultimately going to eradicate all problems but i am guaranteeing that the moment you decide to see things from a different light in your mind's eye and not the obstacles ahead of you you will begin to actually see some some progress and results that you desire now let me bring it to a scientific part it is actually uh, in science there is a thing that is called wait wait for it i had it this morning <laughs> i had it this morning allow me to just read it is, it is called um the reticular active activating system yeah i had to refer to my notes it said the reticular activating system simply dubbed as ra what this is is that it's a part of your brain that actually tells your brain which information is relevant to keep and which information is act should actually be discarded so that means that it is possible with how you have viewed things to always view opportunities to break through to do well as the irrelevant stuff and always the negative things as the things you should keep now in order to experience a change of what you see i believe that it is firmly important first of all number one who you know and number two what you know so what do you know about your situation and at the same time who do you know in this case because if you're constantly surrounded by the people who are always putting forth the negative circumstances like you know what things are hard in the in the country the government this and this just won't work because those people are stubborn and you won't get any support from here so who do you know and what kind of voices are speaking and encouraging you i say that i have or rather i'm confident that i have some of the most supportive people who encourage me to do my very best at the same time what do you know we've looked at who you know now we're going to consider what do you know i believe that firmly what scripture says is true that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge if you're trying to accomplish anything of significance and worth you would need to get new information about that situation and how best you can come out on top now obviously this is not new to a lot of us actually when i read about Roger Bannis i said oh wow this is just another athlete who went on to do some pretty remarkable things and we could go home because honestly we hear these kind of stories every day you hear people speaking like me every day but what really makes this particular uh thing or principle timeless and true is your application of the truth i've been in so many circumstances sat in too many meetings where people have shared profound wisdom and i keep telling myself like you know what yeah i actually kind of know this stuff you know what yeah i've heard this before but what really brings change is if the moment you decide that i've had enough and it's time to begin to apply this information. So if you, after watching this video, you just say, hey, Mopin made a video and he was talking about what we see with our mind's eye. And that's it. And you shared it and you commented and you liked, which I'm so grateful for. But more than anything, I'm gonna be more excited if you're able to just say, you know what, there's this thing that I've been thinking about and I need to do it. I've been so afraid, but now I need to find, first of all, people who know better about this matter because the world is full of people who are thriving at higher levels than we are. And at the same time, I need to be informed about this particular situation. The internet has endless resources about how to do this. For instance, the light setup in, I guess, the space that I'm shooting in, I, ha I learned fully on YouTube. Nobody had to sit me down and say, hey, you know what, you need to do it like this, you need to do it like this. I don't even have a tripod, but if I could show you the behind the scenes is what's the holding up these cameras, it was all available to me on the internet. So we really don't have an excuse. So after watching this video, I'm, I'm really, 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 and that's a lot of reasons, praying that your number one motivation or your number one goal after this would be how can I apply the truth that I've now encountered? How can I literally change what I see? Remember what I talked about. There are more ways in which you can change what you see, but these two for me have really been big. Who do you know and what do you know? And when I say who do you know, I think it's important to have the right kind of people. I think we have endless supply of people who just want to hang and just want to be there, but people, I'm talking about the people who want to see you actually do well and actually beat the odds. I'm thankful enough to be blessed blessed with those kind of individuals at this point really big shout out to stanley who made sure and was on my case ensuring that i kept 
my schedule and I actually shot this particular YouTube video. So people like that who are ensuring that you're actually doing your best, who are pushing you to do better. And also at the same time, what do you know about those or rather that circumstance? One thing that I'm going to bring it home to and something which is really personal to me because of my faith and that is the Bible. As much as there is a vast amount of information out there, if you're not in the Word of God, and if you're not actively taking time to learn what God says about your life and who you are, it's going to be really hard for you to actually have a different lens about how you th view life. Somewhere along in this video, either at the beginning, depending on how the editing process went, there was a clip of me entering an abandoned building, and there's a, a sort of a clip of me climbing up this rocky looking mountainscape, and for me, the abandoned building has always been a symbol of what's possible. I keep thinking to myself, like, you know what? Somebody should actually buy this property, me, and create something magnificent from it. Either develop it and make it a place with like the latest and the modern, a modern housing complex with flats, with all the latest amenities, everything you could possibly imagine. Secondly, also the mountainscape for me, as much as people look at it and say it's too rocky, I can't manage to go up and the possibility of snakes. Oh my goodness. For me, I keep saying like, you know what? The view up there must be really remarkable. And that's because simply I know something that they don't. First of all, I know that, you know what? Abandoned property makes for a cheap sale. And so I keep looking at that beauty and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to buy this one day and I'm going to develop this land. I'm going to make something of it. People keep looking and I say it's dangerous. It will break down and all these things. But my mind's eye is automatically geared to what's the possibility here. Because over time, I've cultivated this within myself. And it's something that you can do as well. Now, if you're not exposing yourself to the right material, and I would encourage you to get in the word of God if you can, because it is going to literally refine how you view things, refine how you view circumstances, and even change how you speak. All of a sudden, what seemed impossible becomes possible. Like, you know what? You need a radical kind of faith for you to actually see a dead person and say, you know what? This person can live. I think that automatically means that, yo, the lens through which you see things is not like that of normal or ordinary people. So that really is the lesson and the principle in this video. And I know, and I'm going to say this again. You've heard people talk like this. This information is not new to me. But what's really going to make this information lasting and create an impact and really going to be the purpose and the sole aim of this video is if 